Hi everyone, welcome back to the Generative AI podcast from Happiest Minds. I'm Pragya Suganda and I head marketing for Generative AI Business Services globally at Happiest Minds. Today we have Srinivas Ayangar with us. Shani is one of the industry leaders and evangelists with 25 plus years of experience in information technology. Currently working with Happiest Minds as Vice President and Head of Healthcare and Life Sciences Vertical. He has been recognized as one of the top 50 global thought leaders and influencers on health tech by leading global platforms. Welcome Shani, welcome to our podcast series. So Shani, there is a lot of buzz happening around the generative AI space and particularly in the healthcare and the life sciences domain. So tell us, how is generative AI impacting the overall healthcare sector? I'll set the the context with some uh, statistics. So if you look at 2022, the overall GenAI market size was about uh, $29 billion. And 2023, we're going to see that increase up to $43 billion. And we expect the GenAI market size to be around uh, $667 billion by the end of 2030. That is quite a staggering number. If you look at healthcare and life sciences, they are the biggest gainers of GenAI as a technology. And Today, I believe they are leading the way in terms of new Gen AI implementations. I also believe that healthcare and life sciences market will reach up to $150 billion by end of uh, 2030. It is mainly because Gen AI as a technology has all the potential to revolutionize the healthcare and life science market the way we have never seen it uh, before. So the kind of use cases uh, that we are seeing today or that we are implementing today, starts from drug discovery till clinical trials. We are also not just generating healthcare data. We are also able to generate synthetic cohort of patients, which can help in different aspects of healthcare and life sciences uh, life cycle. So today when I'm talking to our customers, about uh, 60% of them, they've already implemented uh, Gen AI and using it effectively. And the most important part is they have done it in the last one year at a breakneck speed. There are businesses which are heavily impacted by Gen AI, according to me. Just to give an example, the fraud, wasted abuse industry, be it healthcare or be it financial services, they are heavily impacted and they are at a strategic inflection point at this point of time. Mainly because they were earlier mostly rule based, which was able to unearth 5 to 10% of fraud, wasted abuse. And today with uh, generative AI, we should be able to generate uh, or unearth up to 80% of uh, the FWA activities, right? So because of that, they're going to get heavily impacted. So which also means that companies which are going to get impacted by Gen AI, they have to revisit um, the impact on Gen AI on their business and uh, uh, they have to revisit their overall strategies. Shani, what are the three areas where generative AI is making the most impact in the healthcare and the life sciences industry? Sure. The three areas, according to me, that is impacting the healthcare and life sciences market. One is on the converse. Second one is uh, generating uh, generating new content. And uh, third one is uh, take action. So what do we mean by converse here? Converse means conversing with the knowledge database for faster, easier access of information using natural language. So to be more specific with an example, let's take an example of a researcher who's researching on a specific area. Let's let's take a genome sequencing and he has got tons of articles as a knowledge database with him. Now he wants to know if somebody else is doing something similar and to what extent they've reached in their research. So can he converse with the knowledge database and extract that information? One aspect. Second one is, if you look at a doctor, he's got access to the patient database and now he's about to discharge a patient from the hospital. Can he converse with the the patient database that he has to check if the patients have any allergic reactions to the new drug that he's going to prescribe to the patient? That's the conversing part. Cool, right? Now, the patient is getting discharged. The doctor has to generate the discharge summary. Now, can the doctor request system to generate the discharge summary? So that's the generating new content because discharge summary is totally new content that is getting generated from the system. That's the second part of it. 
The third one that I'm talking about is the most important part. That's the take action part. So now that the doctor conversed with the patient database, doctor also made the system write the discharge summary. But at that point of time, let's take an example. If doctor comes to know that the patient has diabetic retinopathy, which is then the discharge summary, but that has got nothing to do with the three days of surgical procedure that the patient went through. Now, can the system take action? Can the system immediately schedule a meeting with the ophthalmologist before the patient leaves the hospital and take necessary actions accordingly? That's the take actions part. So the three aspects which is impacting healthcare industry today is the first one is converse, second one is generate new content and third one is take action. And Shruti, how has Happiest Minds implemented generative AI in this industry? So I talked about the three aspects of uh, implementation that we are doing today, right? The first one is converse, second one is generating new content and third one is take action. So we are working with our customers today in all the three aspects. Some of the use cases that um, we have implemented today is on uh, medical device uh, productive maintenance part, very important for medical device industry. We are also working with hospitals in building or research organizations in building the clinical evaluation reports. And the third one is on the automation of uh, scientific data. So these are some of the examples that uh, we are implementing today. That's one part of it. The second part of it is, Gen AI as a technology is not without challenges and risks. It could be ethical, it could be legal, it could be technical, or it can be any other uncertainties that it has. The most important part is our customers need to be aware of such threats of Gen AI and how to adopt strategies to leverage its potential. So Happiest Minds works closely with our customers, starting from ideating their Gen AI strategy, implementing proof of concepts, and also towards building large-scale Gen AI implementations. And finally, in your opinion, how do you see the future of generative AI spanning in the next few years? So there's no, uh, there's no doubt that um, Gen AI is very promising and exciting. So Gen AI is not a silver bullet, which has solution to each and every problem, but rather it's a powerful tool for augmented intelligence uh, to work very closely with humans. So according to me, Gen AI is laying the foundation stone for artificial general intelligence, which also means that once Gen AI and artificial intelligence leaves this stage of innovation, as a part of technology head cycle and they move further, we'll have better personalized precision and timely diagnosis and Gen AI will surely enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of the healthcare system. Thank you so much Shini for being here with us and sharing your thoughts. It's been a very interesting session and for the viewers, please stay tuned. We'll be back with more leaders who will share their thoughts on what's happening in the space of generative AI.